Hello everyone, welcome to English Tutorials by Poonam Thakur. In this video, I am going to discuss poetic devices used in the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers by Edwin Rich. Aunt Jennifer's Tigers is a beautiful short poem rich in symbolism and imagery. Through the poem, the poet highlights the struggles, injustices and oppressions of an apparently upper middle class woman who can express her desire for freedom only in her art. Tortured and terrorized by the male dominated world, Aunt Jennifer recoils within and seeks comfort in her art which is both a means of escape for her and a compensation for the loss of individual freedom. The poem reflects a woman who is stressed because of social restraints and responsibility of an ideal wife. She lacks confidence, strength and fearlessness. She lacks inner conviction or certainty unlike the tigers she portrays. The wedding ring on her hand is a constant reminder that she belongs to her husband. Even after her death, the ring will remain on her hand and she will never be free. On the other hand, the tigers that she is embroidering will continue to move around freely forever. Her desire of freedom and fearlessness will live on through her tigers. Adrian Rich makes use of several poetic devices in Aunt Jennifer's Tigers. These include anaphora, alliteration, imagery, hyperbole, personification, repetition and transferred epithet, which I am going to explain in detail one by one. So let's get started. First, I am going to discuss the rhyme scheme used in the poem. Aunt Jennifer's Tigers has 12 lines and is made up of three stanzas of four lines each known as quatrains. Each stanza is made up of two couplets. And what is a couplet? A couplet is a pair of lines. For example, if we see the last two lines of the poem, the tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid. So you see children made rhyme with unafraid and it's an example of a couplet. The first two lines of the poem set up a rhyme scheme that continue throughout with the perfect end rhyme of screen green. The rest of the poem uphold the use of rhyming couplets presenting a rigid regularity that reflects the rigid confines of Aunt Jennifer's marriage. The rhyme pattern for the poem is AA, BB, CC, DD, E, E, F, F. This rigid pattern mirrors the rigid life of Aunt Jennifer. The other thing that you should know about the poem is that it is written in a sort of iambic pantometer. Personification. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty. The tigers are personified throughout the poem when they are described as being proud, confident and unafraid of men standing beneath the tree. The tigers are personified means that they are given human traits and specifically described as having chivalric certainty. Chivalry is an old term used to refer to the code of conduct a medieval knight would adhere to. In modern times, the use of the term chivalrous or chivalric is still used to imply a gentleman who is courteous and considerate of women. The tigers are thus associated with heroic men. Next, we have metaphor. And what is a metaphor? A metaphor is a figure of speech that is used to make a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do have something in common. Unlike a simile where two things are compared directly using like or as, a metaphor's comparison is more indirect. It is implied simile. Bright topaz denizens of a world of green. The poet compares the yellow stripes of the tigers to a precious stone topaz. 
So the metaphor bright topaz depicts the shining yellow complexion of Aunt Jennifer's tigers. Next we have alliteration. What is alliteration? It is the repetition of same consonant sounds at the beginning of neighboring or closely connected words. Poet has used alliteration to describe the movement of the tigers. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty where consonant sound C is repeated. The second stanza introduces us to Aunt Jennifer with her fingers fluttering through the wool. Here F sound is repeated. Another example of alliteration in the poem is go on prancing proud. Here consonant sound P is repeated which emphasizes the feeling of confidence expressed in the tiger's movements. The poet has beautifully used poetic device anaphora in the first stanza of the poem. The term anaphora refers to a poetic technique in which successive phrases or lines begin with the same words. The repetition can be as simple as a single word or as long as an entire phrase. They do not fear the men beneath the tree. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty is an example of anaphora. Irony Irony is a form where the literal meaning is completely opposite to what is conveyed by the author or the poet. We'll go on prancing proud and unafraid. These lines bring forth a sense of irony as the tigers are much stronger than the woman who created them. It is ironical that Aunt Jennifer's creations, the tigers, will continue to pace and prance freely while Aunt herself will remain terrified even after death. Another example is the ring. The ring should love and protect but it enslave and terrifies Aunt Jennifer. Transferred epithet. An epithet is an adjective or adjective phrase that is used to characterize or to describe someone or something. Transferred epithet is when this adjective is transferred to a different noun. The poet has smartly used transferred epithet in terrified hands in which Aunt Jennifer's hands represent her terror. Her hands are not terrified. It's Aunt Jennifer itself who is terrified of her husband. The fear of her husband has gone deep into her being that even death cannot liberate her from the chains of her mental suppression. Memories of her husband's tortures and atrocities which bent her into a humiliating slavery will continue to haunt her even after her death. And next we have hyperbole, massive weight of uncle's wedding band. The poet exaggerates the weight of her husband's wedding ring to make a point about how dominating he is. The wedding band appears to be weighing her down. She appears to be bound to social and marital obligations and the wedding band appears more of a restraint than a symbol of love, joy or freedom. This over-the-top description suggests that the weight of the ring is more mental than physical. Next we have metonymy. It's a figure of speech which refers to something by using an object closely associated with it. The poet has used metonymy to describe the matrimonial hardships Aunt Jennifer is facing. The wedding ring or wedding band represents the sad, unfortunate married life Aunt Jennifer has been through. The poet Adrian Rich has used various images and symbols to stress upon the chauvinism of man and the oppression of the women at his hands. Let me tell you about the visual imagery used in the poem first. What is imagery? Imagery means to use visually descriptive or figurative language to represent objects, actions and ideas in such a way that it appeals to our physical senses. Usually, it is thought that imagery makes use of particular words that create visual representation of ideas in our minds. 
the main images are of aunt jennifer as a fearful wife and secondly the magnificent tigers she creates in her panel images of precious substances run through the poem topaz ivory needle and the gold of wedding band in the first stanza the poet conveys the image of aunt jennifer's vibrant colored tigers living in a rich green landscape these regal tigers are living life with splendor as one would expect of tigers in the wild aunt jennifer is embroidering the cloth and across it prance the tigers of bright topaz unafraid of the men standing beneath the tree and move about elegantly with confidence in the second stanza the image of aunt jennifer's hands fluttering as she works on her wool fluttering is a verb often used to describe words she is so weak and oppressed that her frail fingers are not able to carry the weight of something as light as wool ringed with ordeals is a image used by the poet to express the struggles of aunt jennifer and the oppression she suffers she feels so burdened by her marital constraints that they seem like an ordeal to her in the poem ring has two meanings it is an example of pun the pun makes use of words that have more than one meaning or words that sound similar but have different meanings ringed indicate entrapment as the ring encircles the finger similarly aunt jennifer's husband has encircled her in his clutches even in her death the ring on her finger will remain as a testament of the unhappy marriage in which she was trapped encircled or surrounded there's another meaning to the ring ring also refers to the wedding ring which brings husband and wife into matrimony forever here ring is a symbol of the sacred bond of marriage it stands for love and to protect next we have enjambment in poetry enjambment means moving over from one line to another without terminating punctuation mark the continuation of sentence beyond the end of a line or a stanza or a couplet is used in the poem through the words will find that's lines 5 and 6 band sits lines 7 and 8 lines 9 and 10 lie still and made will lines 11 and 12 i have included two examples from the poem aunt jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie still ringed with ordeals she was mastered by the meaning runs over from one poetic line to the next without terminal punctuation let me tell you about symbolism first symbolism refers to the use of an object figure event situation or an idea to represent something else typically it has a deeper meaning that differs from its factual meaning the things used for symbolism are called symbols the poet adrian rich has used many symbols in the poem the massive weight of uncle's wedding band is symbol of harsh and bitter experiences of aunt jennifer's married life the tigers are the symbol of courage honor bravery and confidence aunt jennifer is a symbol of oppressed woman who is a victim of gender oppression and uncle is a symbol of male chauvinism who dominates aunt jennifer and considers her as his property i'm going to explain the symbols used in the poem in detail wedding band usually wedding band is a symbol of joy and happiness but in the case of aunt jennifer it has become a symbol of torture oppression bondage and show power of her husband on her her relationship with her authoritative husband has become a painful burden to carry her wedding band has brought her a world of pain misery and torture she has lost her freedom and is living in a world of humiliation and oppression tigers tigers are the symbol of courage honor bravery and confidence 
actually they are reflection of aunt jennifer's inner self the tigers therefore are a symbol of liberty which aunt jennifer has been denied but longs for they also symbolize untamed free spirit here they are antithesis of their creator's personality they pace and prance freely proudly fearlessly confident and majestic in their bearing aunt jennifer aunt jennifer is a typical victim of male oppression in an unhappy marriage who suffers loss of individuality dignity and personal freedom silently she becomes dependent fearful and frail she is a woman trapped in the cultural constraints and responsibilities of marital life and oppressive male dominance in a patriarchal society uncle he symbolizes male chauvinism he is the one who has mastered aunt jennifer's spirit he is her master reflecting the reality that a woman in marriage is traditionally considered the man's property men beneath the tree are predators they are who look for other animals or people in order to use control or harm them in some way bright topaz symbolizes the bright yellowish brown color of the tiger skin embroidery embroidery is symbol of creative expression the artwork expresses the aunt's suppressed desires and becomes her escape from the oppressive reality of her life the ivory needle is characteristic of the hunting of elephants for their tusks this is all symbolic of the male dominance that has such a deep impact within the meaning of this poem Let's compare and contrast Aunt Jennifer and her tigers. Aunt Jennifer's world is dull and colorless, but her embroidered tigers are bright topaz denizens of world of green. Aunt Jennifer is quite weak and submissive, whereas the tigers are strong, bold and powerful. They are fearless and move about freely. She is bound by the constraints of her married life. while the tigers are free to move about in the green forest aunt jennifer is so victimized and oppressed that her frail fingers are fluttering when she is trying to pull the ivory needle whereas her tigers are very confident and they prance across the screen with a sleek chivalric certainty very confidently and let's see the comparison what is common between the two Aunt Jennifer is bound by the weight of the ring on her fingers. She is not free. She is just like a slave in this marriage. Aunt Jennifer's tigers are permanently trapped in an embroidery ring. They will never be able to escape the screen in which they have been embroidered by Aunt Jennifer. Their world is just within that embroidered ring, just like their creator, Aunt Jennifer. who will never be able to liberate herself from this unhappy marriage poet has also used repetition in the poem repetition of aunt jennifer and tigers create a horrifying ambience of the oppressor and the oppressed the theme of male chauvinism runs throughout the poem creating a fearsome atmosphere of tigers on the prowl for a prey The word prance is repeated to emphasize the pride and freedom of the tigers. Poet has very smartly used paradox in the poem. And what is a paradox? A paradox is a self-contradictory statement but in reality expresses a possible truth, any person, thing or situation exhibiting an apparently contradictory nature is paradox. In the poem a trembling and mastered woman creates free and confident creatures in her artistic endeavors they pace in sleek chivalric certainty fluttering fingers produce something that has certainty it is clearly an example of paradox thank you so much for watching right till the end don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it see you soon happy watching English tutorials by Poonam Thakur